Right, good morning or evening, whatever time of the day you're watching this. It's Leslie in Bangor and I've been asked to do a little video of the paper folding for Christmas trees since we're all stuck in the house at the moment. So this is a special hello to the ladies in Ireland McGee. So, hi ladies. So I hear you say back, hi Leslie. So, let's get on with it. This one here, this is made from one book. And what you need first of all, we add for the forage here, good quality paper. So you can use a magazine like this, a garden magazine, but I have another design to show you where I've used the books that you pick up at your local supermarket, like I shop in Tesco's and I lift their books and they work very well. Just if the paper is of a poor quality, then you need more books. So this one here is ideal for the top of your fireplace or on a shelf and these are ideal again for people who don't want a big tree up or you're living in an apartment or some of the younger people can make it for their own bedroom or take it as a gift to say their granny. So this one here, I'll show you the technique, you do the decoration whatever way you'd like. These are little beads. This is this sort of thing which you can buy in the pawn shop and you can cut them off in bits or if you don't want to buy anything and you have a, a, a necklace lying around that you haven't used for a long time, fed up with or just broken, you can cut these up and put them on individually. So again, it's virtually costing you nothing. The other main thing you would need is either these glue dots, which I've used mainly on these, or this here. We cut these, you don't need a big, big tab, cut them into a little bit and in that pound pack, you also get the double sided tape. So I'll tell you about that also. This one, uh, I have used two books. And like this, this one here, I put on a piece of a heavier card on the back, just to give it a bit of rigidity, and one on the base. Uh, so I'll show you, this is the one book prepared. I'll show you the folding in a second. And what I've used here, I've used the back kept the cover on in this case to make it and you see how well it sits up. So I'll just lift these aside so I can show you uh, the technique. Right, if you're going to do two books back to back and generally always you take the cover off the hard cover and the book obviously is facing you. So I'm going to turn the book round to face the camera so you can see the workings. And you're the camera and this is facing you. So you simply take your first page and you fold it down to the spine, giving a really good crease. You fold it again to the spine. Hope you're seeing that a good crease and then you fold the bottom bit up. Again I stress be firm on your creasing, turn it over, repeat and you do this right to the end of the book. Good firm crease, fold over again to the spine. So now you're seeing your shape coming out and fold your bottom up. Not your bottom, the bottom of the page. That'll give my daughters a wee laugh, and granddaughters. So you keep going. You can do this while you're sitting watching TV or whatever it is. Nice if you were in a group together. And it is relaxing because you can sit and do it and talk away as I'm doing now. I'll just do a couple more so you get the idea. And when you fold those pages over, push them down. And don't worry if one goes a little bit not the way you thought. It will all work out well. I have to keep my eye on here because I'm doing it upside down. So I'll lift this up for you to see now. So there you see the pages coming along, folding. And then what you do at the end, I have this one already done, you flick it upside down and you flick all those wee fold bits up, open, because they form a base. 
But actually, when you have two books done, or even one book of good quality, it will stand without this, okay? But that's what you do. Remember that now, ladies? You flick that little bit down at the end, once you have the whole book completed. And there you see how it sits. I'll move this out of the way. And you can stretch it out. You, one book could do, because you can stretch the pages and move it like so, separate it. Spread your tree out. And you see how well that's sitting? There's no cardboard under it or anything like that. Uh, but if you think back to my first one, excuse me, where I've done two books back to back, how my tree is much fuller and thicker. And what I did to join the two books was, going back to this one, I simply took a strip of the double-sided tape, put a piece down there, a piece down there, then peeled off, don't peel off the second layer until you're ready to put the two books together, and then just bring your two books together, and then you have a full round. So that's one little idea I have for you. And meanwhile, as you're meeting, so I'm just getting a tissue, um, you can enjoy then doing your decorations. Sorry about that. Now, when you're putting your little decorations on, I have these little um, uh, snowflakes, and try not to put them all in the same place, vary your design, and to say, with your glue dots, I'll show you that, you might have, now and again you're in the glue dots, you get a wee bit cross with each other, because they can get a wee bit messy on the finger. But what I do, where's one of those little beads I have? Here. If I was putting this on, the ideal thing is I really need my glasses for this, is take your bead to the dot, rather than pull the dot off, okay? So roll the dot round the bead, scrunch the paper, and pull that away. That way, most of the dot stays on. You won't see it, but it's there, it's sticking to my finger. Whereas if you try to pull the dot off first, it doesn't work as well. And then you adhere it to your design. Put that down there. Now, but my girls will remember, I was always very fussy decorating the tree. I'd say, could you hold the lights? And they'd say, oh, we're allowed to hold them. Because it's important to get everything in the right place. So that there's moving, and I'll have to put a wee glue dot there. So enjoy, I put a little extra ball on the top. You could put little sweets around the bottom, or, or buy little parcels and put it around, just to give that real festive feel. So I'm going to show you another idea. Now this one is the lantern design, and I'll lift the lantern off, see how it comes off, like so. And I just had a, a posy pad here, an old one that I'd used already, and it's got the silver ribbon around it to give it the Christmas effect, and the artificial poncettias. And then after I had made this, and this is the one made from the Tesco magazines, I first made it with two, and then I said, oh, that could be thicker. So I pulled it apart and made a third one. So there are three books in here. And then into that, uh, you know I'm a floor demonstrator and arranger. Into that I had put in a little bit of the yarrow. That's in here somewhere, I guess. I had this dried in my shed. And I just thought, like being a lantern, this was thinking of light. And the poncetti is very much Christmas. And I'll show you how that is done as well now. When you have it, there's these little folds in the paper. And for those uh, more flower arranging people, you could put a little glass tube or plastic tube in there with a flower or a lovely piece of vine coming out of it and use this any time of the year. I also did it as a half and this I used my Bible notes for when they were finished. And again, that would sit lovely on your fireplace or shelf. And I really thought this was uh, uh, very much in keeping as here we were reading uh, the Word of God, and it's a little lamp, so it's the light of Jesus, the light of the world. So that's just a little thought for you. And now I'll show you the folding of that one. And then at the end, I'll put them back together for you, so that you get a good view. Right, to do this one, again, upside down, 
First thing, you definitely take the cover off because you're joining bricks together. And it's facing me, but I'm turning it to you, the camera. So this is slightly different to get that shape. You fold the first page over to the spine, half, vertical, portrait, okay? Again, good quality paper and a good strong crease. Fold it over again. So we have it this size, okay? This is how you're going to get this end. Fold it over. Now this you fold from the top down. Top down, so you've got a triangle. Then you fold from the bottom up. And now you have the point. So you see how this one is forming. Like so. Could be a boat. <laughs> Look at that, I have a boat. I'll do a few pages so you see. Fold to the spine, good crease. Fold again to the spine, this is on the straight like a ruler, and fold it over. Nice Christmas page for you. Fold down to the spine, you've got one triangle, fold from the bottom up to that. And now you've got the, like we talked, the paper hat idea. I'll do a few more to the spine, crease, remember the creasing, over again. It's roughly the width of a ruler as you do this. Fold that over, good crease down. Then from the top down to the spine, from the bottom up to the spine, and fold over. I'll do a few because the video is going to be very quick indeed. Now I know it's a very strange year for all of us so I really hope you're all keeping well and uh, along to see you when I'm up there seeing the grandkids. And I do watch your service, it's very good indeed. It makes me feel in Nyla McGee. So I'll lift this up so you see it coming along. There you've got your tops and bottoms and the bit in the middle. I'll take you back to this. That's showing there. And this one sits up perfectly well too. Fat, flat for the back of a, on the fireplace as I would have, or a bookshelf. So I'll just bring those back for you to see. This one. This one is a year old, sorry, in case it's not on camera. This one's a year old. I actually made this for my mum and uh, she has that all year round. She's now gone into a beautiful nursing home or care home and uh, I'll be taking that one back around to her. And these would be nice, as I say, to give as little gifts. So just lift this one back up for you. I'll bring this into pieces in case I drop it. Set it there so you see the idea of the lantern. It can sit on its own or put it on a base like this just to dress it up that little bit more. And just a reminder you can use an old necklace. You definitely need the little tabs or the glue dots and something like this, the tree garland. And in this case I will not be telling you how to hang your lights. So for Leslie and Banger, have a very happy, merry and safe Christmas until I see you. Bye. I should have said this is the closest you get to a Christmas jumper. <laughs>